ready. Yep. Today I have my friend, fellow legal eagle, fellow law professional, uh, attorney. What do you say, all four? Attorney Joshua S. Kula. Oh, I know I just did, but introduce yourself to the people. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to join you. I'm Joshua Kula. I got my juris doctorate from Atlanta's John Martin Law School. So we're both from ATL. Yes. But we're librarian breeds, you know? Yes. So librarian breeds making strides around the world. Got a law degree. I'm a photographer by hobby, but it's a professional hobby. I don't know if that makes sense. Side hustle. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm a legal and organizational consultant. Most of the time, that's the professional had our way. And you just recently moved back home? Yeah, I moved back to Liberia about 12 months ago, almost. Yeah. So it's been it's been a wonderful journey so far. Being in Liberia, getting adjusted to the professional landscape and all that. Social life, professional life, the religious life. It's a good mix so far. I wanted to link up with Joshua so that we discuss the law and politics in Liberia. Today is kind of perfect because um, there is a protest going on in Liberia. Probably by the time that I upload this, it will, will probably be some days or maybe a week or so after the protest has happened. But I thought it would be best that you know someone that's on ground, that's in the legal field that understands the interpretation of the constitution and all of all things law here in Liberia would be the best person for me to talk to about this. So, uh, Joshua, yeah. with everything that's going on on ground now, uh, specifically with this protest, what is your outlook on it? Do you think that is something that will be beneficial uh, to the Republic in the long run? Do you think that it is something that um, is going to be detrimental to society? What's your, what's your take on that? Oh, for me, I think long term, yeah, it will be beneficial for Liberia in the sense that we have an example where our democracy is tested. Because most of the time, Liberia's democracy, from my observation, is, is a few things that happen, but everything that happens is important because there aren't so much that happen compared to other countries that get to test their democracy several times in several ways. This protects for one. Short term, it doesn't have an effect because this is something that's been done over and over. People protest about the same things but not proposing solutions. It's like we always identify the problem everybody else already knows about and we say it's an issue but we never providing an opportunity for something to be done. In as much as Council of Patriots I completely and giving ultimatum, but they're saying this this problem should be solved. They're not telling you how yeah, they could be solved. Yeah. And I've learned that one of the hardest things for Liberians to answer is the question how. Mm. You think I'm like Ooh, trying that's good. Ask that's how. real. And they'll always tell you, oh it's easy you do this, but they never give you a step to step process on mm. this is how to do it. Nobody answers how. Everybody answers what, where, when, and we especially know how to answer why. But we never answer how. Hmm. Gems. Dropping <laughs> dropping gems already. I always see you tweet out when you attend the different senatorial proceedings or things that the House are voting on. A lot of people don't know that that's something that they can they can they can go to. Oh, so off of how you know you just you just pose the how question, right? So how can we tell them ways to get involved with the the democratic process? You know, with their civic their civic duty in the political um, arena. All right. One, there are several ways different people can get involved, and I'll be a hipster Liberian and try to answer how. <laughs> so. For one, for me, how did I get involved? I'm passionate about Liberia. Everything in Liberia is important to me. I moved back to Liberia because one, I didn't want to contribute to Africa's brain drain. It's a phenomenon for Africans. The best brains out of Africa tend to leave Africa and go and work elsewhere. And as much as they indirectly work for Africa, but all their youthful years are spent in other countries. 
Nothing against people who are doing it. I, I, I respect I respect her right hustle because one Liberia is in a comfortable place to come and sure, meet. So sure. I wouldn't tell you you're obligated that you have to do it. Sure. And two everybody wants their professional growth. Professional growth and development barely happens in Africa. So I came to Liberia and I've been putting myself out there. The same thing everywhere, networking. Your network is your network. That's why I do it. So I go to talk to everybody, especially in Liberia, Sub-Saharan Africa, nobody pays attention to young people. So it's like, hey, I just came. If you don't have money to offer them, you aren't here for some sponsorship or something, they barely look at you. So, oh, hello, I just came to get connected with your office. I want to know what you do and how you do. Most of the people there don't even know what they do exactly. They just come to work. So you ask questions, network, and you, you don't come condescendingly. You come wanting to learn because, yeah, we have the Western education and all that. They already look at us from the side eye because of that. Oh, you came, you're trying to take our job, that's why you did. But no, not really, I'm just trying to learn from you. So can you show me what you do, how you do? So asking questions like that, I got involved with the Carter Center Democracy Program. Initially, I consulted for the Access to Justice Program doing trainings for lawyers and stuff like that. But the democracy program during the, after the election observation, they were looking into ways they can stay in Liberia and work with Liberia's democracy. So I, looking around networking, I asked, hey, is it possible to do something like legislative monitoring? So what exactly is that? So it's an idea. But can you put it on paper? Let's see if it works. So I drafted the program, idea, pitched it, they approved it. So networking, you have to create your own path most of the time. So I started consulting with Carter Center's legislative monitoring program. My dream is more than the Carter Center monitoring program, but this is the medium that I used for the last few months. And the idea is to help Liberians get more information on their legislature. How does the legislature work? Because in Liberia, we only vote for senator representative if they're providing stuff for us. And representation doesn't mean providing bag of rice and providing food stuff. To me, that's a miss conception of what the role is so in order to educate people on what it is we have to show them what's being done so showing how by following legislative proceedings it's open so i didn't know it was open because i always hear about house sessions and in liberia i feel like open sessions are really open so when i went there like it's open can we attend in the senate Anybody can walk in and attend as long as you have an ID. What type in, of ID? Your passport your, your or national ID, ID? ID card? So your, license. your passport, a license, or if you represent an organization or a school, yeah. preferably a school. If you're a student, you bring a student ID, okay. you get preference. In the House of Representatives, because of space, they require you to ask permission, but it's very informal because I wrote a whole letter asking permission for five persons and she read it, the lady read the letter like, sure. Like, can you give me a letter to show that we are accredited? I said, no, don't worry about it, just come up. And when the guy asks you, I'll let you know. So that's how we got in. And we observed the legislative proceeding throughout 2019 from June till December. So we got to see most of the action. In the House of Representatives, there were mostly executive sections. Executive sections is where they put everybody who's not a legislative aide or a legislature outside so they can meet in-house and talk. And that was mostly because of the sensitive issues they were discussing. That's why, but generally it's open. So we got to witness, there were 77 sections. There's a full report. I did a full report on this too, guys. Because <laughs> that, that's what comes with your legislative monitoring yeah. work. 
comes with it. <laughs> the, the work, the work comes with it. There's a lot of reports, there's a lot of data to analyze, yeah. how to write reports for every section and every interaction with legislature. So mm -hmm. at the end of every day, there's four or five reports to write. But that's the fun part because I'm a nerd. <laughs> and I like, I like papers. So <laughs> that was fun. Okay. On the topic of dual citizenship, you know, a lot of people like want to know about that um so for me i've done my research read the constitution i talked to um counselor Sewer cooper read his paper that he wrote but as far as the constitution is concerned have you ever seen anything in the constitution that says that there's no du dual citizenship no there's nothing in the constitution that directly, that directly says, says it. no dual citizenship but there are people that apply clauses from the constitution because there's a the part of the constitution that says for naturalization it requires you to have a black parentage you should be linked to a black parent not not pure caucasian blood race it's important to understand that because of the context there were free slaves that came so they, they had issues with white folks that's why they is it, it, it made, made it like a racist a, like, clause, like now hold on it's not okay now we're, now we're about to ask this question because yeah, yeah. i don't wait, i don't me, consider can i, I don't consider, no you wait think? do you really think it's racist or no, do you think it's protectionist that, that's the to me i say racist because that's the term people people live about it every time it's been talked about yeah. people live it as racist so okay. Okay. potential racist class okay thing is discriminative yes racism is a form of discrimination so even protection is it's still a form of discrimination but it has a reason everything has a reason the reason here is the black folks coming back they didn't have enough money or power so the only way to protect their independence is to make sure those with the money and power they didn't have a means to come and rule them. So they prevented people from, with white ancestry. white ancestry from coming and becoming citizens because if you come and you become a citizen, you already have the money and the power and you are a citizen, there's no way their rights can be protected. Over time, we evolve. So maybe that plus needs to be changed but also people need to understand why it was there. Once we can understand that, why it was our there. reaction to it will be different. And and so this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna come back at you. No okay? problem. Come back at you. So the reason why I say it's protectionist, agreeing with what you said, I like to think of this particular clause as something one. We have to look at it twofold. Like I get what you're saying as, as far as it being discriminative. Until the regular normal day Liberian has the same opportunities as everyone else, allowing other people to have that access to citizenship, I think would stifle the Liberian. So you, have, you have foreigners, you have those who have been naturalized abroad, and then you have those who have been born abroad but still have blood rights. Uh, so those are the three different topic issues that is covering this whole entire dual citizenship uh, uh, topic. However, uh, it's, it's never really focused on all it's three. Different There's different aspects of it. Uh, past October, it pretty much included a copy of what Ghana's dual citizenship uh, act it looks like, where uh, you cannot hold a certain office if you are a citizen of another country outside of Liberia. Uh, to me, I think that's something that can, that's going to be detrimental to the, to the society and our generation because we are the lost generation uh, that didn't have a choice of where you know we were born, didn't have a choice if we were going to leave or to stay. I feel as if this whole addition to the dual citizenship bill of limiting who can be in certain um, offices, it lessens the, the, the pool of eligible Liberians. Um, so what's your thought on that? So my thing is the copy without understanding the context, because in Ghana, the Ghana model was created to meet Ghana need at the time. And Ghana needed foreign investment in the country. So they offer citizenship to foreigners who wanted to come and live in Ghana and do business and grow Ghana's economy. Mm -hmm. And last December, we saw the year of the return. We saw how that was fruitful. 
in Liberia, our context is different. Very you can't so. copy a con you can't copy a model without tweaking it to fit our context. Yeah. The legislature yeah. met. They didn't have the time to talk about it. There weren't any open sections about the West citizenship. They weren't experts invited to discuss it. I was there watching people being put out for executive sections, and the bill passed last minute. The one time it was discussed. That's just how people chose to do it. There, there was one time when those bills were being passed in October, we had to invite experts, the institutions I work with, we had to invite experts the day before it was passed mm. to beg legislatures, we know you're about to pass this, but can you just take the time to hear what this actually means? Mm. So few legislatures attended, and those who attended saw their votes were different from the votes of those who didn't attend and who was just going on sentiments of not native Liberian versus Congo Liberian. That's the rhetoric they tell. And it's also important to know that this bill was passed, but it's not law yet because it's, it's passed for a referendum to be voted on. Yeah. And the this next year, the, the next election. And when is, when is that? Is 2020? Yeah, the election date is still questionable, waiting for the legislative session to open and they finally okay. approve because they also changed the election's date. <laughs> so, two weeks to a time that it doesn't really suit anything. Okay. So, that too needs to be looked at. But tentatively, September or October 2020. The like Liberia, where we have a lot of laws being made. Mm -hmm when there are already laws that exist right. for this exact same purpose, but they are in review. Right. Every new legislative group that comes wants to create their law for this exact same thing. Right, because there, uh, a lot of people don't really understand that the 1847 Constitution was suspended uh, in 1980, um, and then another Constitution was rewritten in, in 1986. 1986. And so there is a, uh, clause, I think it's in like the earlier part of the, the Constitution section two, where it just says that if any law does not align with the 86 Constitution, it's null and, null and void. And so, uh, to Joshua's point of how laws are being made and they're just being, you know, packed on top of each other, when it could just be that whatever law that's already in place needs to just be amended. Um, the Alien and Nationality Act that was written in 1973 and amended in 1974, and so it has not been touched since then. So it, it doesn't even align with the <laughs> it doesn't even align with the 1986 Constitution. So you cannot even look at that um, as law. You cannot even try to argue that point uh, when it comes to dual citizenship. But there's nothing even in the Constitution that says that there is no dual citizenship. Uh, you just have in the Constitution where um, it talks about your blood rights. So Liberia has just uh, sanguine law and not just soli law. So just soli law is pretty much land birth. Just, just sanguine law is your blood, blood right. your blood right right. And so with that, if you have one parent, that's a lot, at least one parent. You have one Liberian parent. At the time enough. of your birth. And you know, so there's there's a lot of us that you know that were born abroad, due to circumstances that were out of obviously <laughs> out yeah. of our control. You know, at the time of your birth, if your parent was still uh, a citizen, um, even at the age of majority, you didn't have anything to to choose from yeah. between the two parents. If your both parents were like Liberian like at the time, even if you were born on a different soil, right? Yeah, if you're born on a different soil, because I was born in Nigeria, right. so when I turned 18. I wanted to get a new passport, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh no, you have to swear your Liberian citizenship before we give you another passport. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, no problem, I'll go and swear my citizenship and get my passport. Mm -hmm. So I, I joke about it and say I'm more Liberian than most <laughs> people born in Liberia because they didn't have to swear for yeah. their citizenship. So like, even though you were born in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and even though said, the constitution applies to you, yeah. uh, since 
your land birth doesn't it, it's not a part of what the constitution yeah. is describing you didn't even have to do i didn't have you didn't to have to swear yeah so that's another thing that we're talking about just the so if you want to argue ignorance you can of argue. the law yeah, yeah. The, the case the, that was just ruled on uh um, last court. month yeah by the supreme right. court this pretty much is kind of like the same thing that you oh, had yeah, to go yeah, through yeah, right yeah. uh so that case had been in in, in uh, the court for about nine years where um a gentleman was denied his his uh passport uh, because they said he took on a, a U.S. citizenship, but the court held um, that essentially he's a Liberian. He's a Liberian. Um, the law that they're trying to take, that what they used to try to take away his is citizenship, not is not law because it does not align with the 1986 Constitution. And so, thankfully, you know, the court stood to that interpretation of the Constitution, yeah. which is very encouraging. To it's, be very it's, encouraging, it's very but encouraging, but another critical thing to look at. The actual citizenship wasn't discussed. Mm, just whether the good, law yes. is valid or not. That's, yes, that's so good. They, all they said, open. all they said was that the you have to go, is, you have to go uh, to the court in yeah, order to, to for anybody to take it away from you, right? No one could just take it away. You have to go like to your, court your, your, your. That's the important thing to know because the current bench of the Supreme Court doesn't want to have a say on citizenship, mm. cognizant of the fact that they aren't a full bench yet. Mm -hmm. they're, still not, they're still not a full bench, so they don't want to do it. And second, it's very political, and they're trying to separate the judiciary from the executive, so they don't want to go out of favor or, in, or be seen as in favor of, so they rely on something else to pass the law. Important to also know that in Liberia, the biggest problem is lack of access to information yes. Yes. and people who have the means to be informed choose not to be informed people who don't have the means to be informed they wait for this they day. satisfy their <laughs> ignorance and they say ignorance is place yes. but the true learning is learning everything you've learned mm -hmm. and going farther than that so i encourage all of us let's learn, learn. as much as we learn can as about much. whatever we want to do yeah. whether it's Traveling to Liberia, maybe it's for fun, is that? People say Liberia gets boring after one week. I've lived in Liberia for <laughs> more than 10 years. There's always something There's new to always do. always something to but do. But if you keep doing the same thing over, over and, and over, over, and over expecting again. a different result, people call that stupidity. So people say it's too. <laughs> so, yeah. Where do you see Liberia going um, politically? Um, I guess between now and the next presidential election in 2023. Between now and 2023. Yes. Where do I see Liberia going? I'm afraid because the biggest the biggest problem with Liberians in politics is integrity, and that's Liberians everywhere, not just in politics. But for for politics, integrity is more important than qualifications. So that's my fear. But. Liberia is a country that the life expectancy for male is 56, for females 58. So Liberia is a very young country. Yep. Everybody over the age of 25 is indirectly involved with politics, at least. 2023, I see more new faces coming into politics. Yeah. My prayer is more women, because we have a national legislature that is 73 representatives and 30 senators, but there are less than 10 females. It's important to have every side represented. Liberia is a country with 60% females. Why will more males be in a position of power than females when everything discussed affects everyone? I'm not saying men shouldn't be empowered. I'm saying women should be encouraged to seek empowerment as well. Provide equal opportunity for everyone. And sometimes that means stopping a guy from going somewhere because too many men already went there. Mm. Sometimes that also means encouraging the men to work along with women because men have a bias. I work with my bro. I don't want to work with a woman. Other times it also means asking a woman to stand up because she has something to say yeah. and she, that opinion. Yeah, she's afraid to say it. So it means different things at different points. I'm not saying it means the same thing everywhere. And so there'll be a lot of new faces. And young people in Liberia have shown that their voice matters. In 2005, 
it were women who elected Ellen. In 2011, it was young people who elected Ellen, even as, in as much as people don't want to admit that it was. Yeah. In 2017, it was young people who elected George Weah. It wasn't a gender issue, it was an age issue mm. to show that majority of the people in Liberia are young people. Yeah. Liberia has an 80% illiteracy rate we see argue 70 percent now because of the growing number of educated people but we say because of the 80 percent illiteracy rate only 20 percent of liberia has more than a high school degree and as much as we see thousands of people graduate from ul every year it's only 20 percent of liberia the educated people will never run out of jobs if you really want to change liberian politics and culture is to get involved if you're educated because the more options people have you wouldn't you like the same people because those same people are qualified so they will be there because they have the years of experience that most people with the degrees don't yeah. so if you want to change that get the experience how do you get the experience by being involved whether it's by supporting a small group what is marching for child rights? What is marching for anything? What is doing, being involved in your community? 2005, the part of the elections were, were suspended for city mayors. So now city mayors are appointed. We've seen examples of city mayors who we don't want and city mayors we love. We saw Yvette Gibson, we saw Jefferson Koji, we saw other people now becoming city mayors of different cities. There are several cities across Liberia. The more people get involved in politics, there will be more city mayors to appoint or elect. That's an opportunity for you to make a difference in your community. You don't have to be a representative or a senator to make a difference. As a city mayor, you have a city budget to work with. So there will be a lot of new faces in Liberia's elections and I'm passionate about creating opportunities for young people to get involved. I'm joining networks of people because my selfish goal is in the next two elections, every elected or appointed official should be someone I know or have their phone number. Because okay. Liberia is such a small country, that's very possible. So are you telling me that one day you may, you know, enter into the N political arena? I, my passion for the political arena is to be a political analyst. Okay. Like somebody has to be neutral. Okay. Everybody wants to do something and an make a change. But I want to be the guy with all the connect. I want to be the club. That's my <laughs> that's my life goal. And I'll be the neutral guy that any and everyone can run to yeah. and, and not from a religious perspective. Because Liberia had Michael Francis, Liberia had Atta F. Kula, Liberia has Lima Bowie, yeah. Liberia has Judy Andy. And those people I needed to create a balance in such a polarized yeah. spectrum. Yeah. So that's why I want to be, I aspire to be the plug that everybody can run to. I think he's on his way to becoming the plug guy. Like, I just want to thank you, Joshua, for taking the time out to talk with me and talking to my Bridge Effect family. Yeah. Um, is there any advice or words of wisdom that you would like to leave um, with everyone watching so I wouldn't say I'm wise but I'll be very cheesy <laughs> bridge effect important thing especially for Liberians in the diaspora or Liberian with foreign education I know it was, it was cut before so I want to say it again yeah I feel like we should be the bridge we've seen what out there we understand our current context in here I feel like my goal in life is to connect the outside world to Liberia by fitting the concepts to the context, mm. to my Liberian context. That's the word. So. That's the word. Fitting the concept to the context. Yeah. If you use it, you have to quote Attorney Joshua S. Kula, okay? K-U-L-A-H, okay? Yeah, that's important. <laughs> Kula. Because I'm cooler. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. And... You, you have been really a, a, an encouraging force to me, um, seeing you being here on ground and the things that you send me and what we talk about has really been something that um, I, I cherish and I appreciate it. So uh, I was supposed to have his graduation program here to hand it to him, 
but being uh, that I left it in a different part of the city, I gotta go get it. But we might have to put that on camera, yeah, so it's we'll, like we have to take a picture your, your because graduation. I graduated law school without being at the ceremony, without being there, and I actually mm -hmm. attended. And I sent him a picture of his name, and I, I got to the program so that he can show it to his parents. But thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, <laughs> different opportunities yeah. to talk about Liberia and yeah. talk about we'll how we We'll have to we do this again. We'll have to yeah. do this again. I'm sure uh, a lot of people are going to have questions and will want to hear more from you because... I, I don't know if you want to hear from this me, guy, but... He, 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 know it. Like, he, like he, know, he knows. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.